As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. Whenever I would talk with individuals who had ongoing engagements with people inside the pattern of narcissism, one of the things that they would not tell me is they would not say, I feel a sense of wholeness. I feel co uh, cooperation here that's, that's really strong and good. There's a real good sense of coordination that we have. No, when you engage with a narcissist, you feel the exact opposite of that. It's important for you to realize that narcissists themselves are broken. They do not have a wholeness from the inside out, but part of their coping strategy, if you will, is to push whatever chaos they're carrying on the inside of themselves onto you. And they actually take delight and feel strength when they can create a splintered mindset inside of you. And it's so essential for you to see what's going on because they want to make you think that you're the one that's just completely off base when in fact, no, they're actually setting up the whole thing to be that way. Narcissists, when they encounter you, they want to infiltrate your priorities. They want to infiltrate the way that you interpret life or they want to infiltrate your reputation. They want to take over your opinions. Sometimes they just ghost you and, and uh, make themselves to be consistently inconsistent, and all the while, they can create a sense of confusion within you. And the more out of kilter you are, then in the end, they get to walk away thinking, see, I'm the better person here. Now, to give you an idea of how this can impact you, and I know that many of you are hurting because of your ongoing relations with these kind of people, I, I have here some things that I've jotted down. It's a, it's kind of a journal of uh, actual comments that I've received from people who have had this splintered off kind of feeling with a narcissist. And I want to go through some of these, and I want to see how many of these, uh, you might want to see how many of these that you can relate to on a personal level. One person says, I used to have a positive opinion of myself, at least around certain friends, but I've been told so many times how phony I am that I don't know what to think about myself anymore. Or another person, my family story has always been about how awful I am, but I'm just different. That's all. Another person says, I have so many memories that I'm ashamed of. I've been so worn down by my ex's rages and accusations that I started acting just like him. And then I would think to myself, this is not me, but it was me. You ever think that way? Or this next person says, I, I got out of one really bad relationship and somehow found my tra myself trapped by someone else who was actually worse. I've totally lost confidence in my ability to choose wisely. Another individual puts it this way. This person says, when someone abuses you like I was abused, it creates so much rage inside. I have so many memories of wishing I could die and then feeling rage toward myself for letting it get to me so deeply. And my heart just breaks when I hear something like this. The next person says, I would argue and argue with the narcissist about his interpretations of me, but then I was made fun of and ridiculed so many times for my bad memory. And then I would doubt my version of what would happen. I still have that problem, even though he's gone now. Another person says, do you know what it's like to be told over and over how stupid you are and that no one will believe you, that no one will ever want you, that people think that you are a joke? This next person says, when I'm around the narcissist people, um, is the way they put it, I get paranoid because I don't know what kind of crap he spread about me. Actually, I don't know what crap he says about me to my people either. It feels like I'm one big exposed tabloid personality. <laughs> Who knows what kind of stories are being told about me? I don't know. I don't know how to chase them down. 
Another person says, I don't want to think that I'm the problem, but maybe I am. And then I put this one down. Another person says, the only time I'm happy is when I'm with my cat. Gus and I can relate to that one. Okay, do you understand what I'm talking about? Narcissists love to keep you in that place of disarray. And rather than creating a sense that says, hey, look, we're a team, we can work this out, I want to know you, and I hope that you can know me, and we can have a sense of wholeness that would be there, they want you to be uh, looking at all sorts of different angles. What happened here? What's going on there? How, how am I supposed to respond to this? And then as you have this feeling of bewilderment and this splintered off kind of a uh, reaction, they just keep the game going. Now, in doing so, the tactics they use are quite predictable. Lots of times they'll go into micromanaging of you. Uh, you didn't do this right. You didn't do that right. Lots of criticizing. And you're over there thinking, well, what's next? What am I going to do now that's going to create disfavor? Um, sometimes they'll show just a general disregard for you uh, as a person. Uh, no, no respect for you. Just a low sense of, uh, of your worth. And you're thinking, well, what did I do to deserve this? You can be exposed to many lies that they will speak about you or toward other individuals. Uh, they'll invalidate you. And over time, you begin wondering what's true and not true. Well, what's not true? And when I think that I uh, have all the facts, they'll come along and tell me that I'm, I'm completely off base. And then they go off into a lecture on that. What am I supposed to believe anymore? The narcissists in their uh, keeping you dysregulated will constantly make themselves to be the victim. Look what you're doing to me. Uh, even though they're victimizing you, basically like you're, you're, you're the one who's, uh, who's going to receive all my venom. And you're thinking, what's going on here? And why do you have to use this kind of tactic? Uh, the narcissist can jump from one topic to another. They can create a lot of circular arguments. It's like when you start talking about one topic and they don't feel like they're getting traction, they'll jump to another topic. And it's like, is there ever going to be an end to this? And then over time, you realize that there's a, a complete inability to have an adult conversation with this person, especially in the midst of differences. And uh, whenever you are talking with that person about a particular con uh, uh, topic, it's going to be probably be taken out of context. You get an idea of what I'm talking about? Narcissists need you to feel splintered. They need you to feel not whole. They need you to feel fragmented because that somehow makes them feel like they're winning. But, but actually what it is, is a it's a deflection from their own garbage. Now, the net result of all of this is that uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can have lots of your own sense of shame about yourself. Uh, one of the comments that I just read here about the person that, uh, that just feels like, well, I don't even like the person I become, and I don't want to think of myself as being the problem, but am I? And that they want you to feel like you're trapped inside your own emotional dysregulation. Uh, they want you to, uh, to filter your opinion of yourself through them. And so you can then sometimes vacillate between being compliant with them versus feeling rebellious. That's the splintering effect. And, and you just never feel like you're able to just be <sighs> me and your, your own regular self. So it's essential for you to recognize, as I mentioned, that these individuals are using this as their own defense mechanism. They want to keep you in this fragmented state uh, because it is a form of deflection. They're deflecting the, ten the uh, attention away from their own miserable selves and they're putting it onto you. They have uh, no ability to introspect. They have no ability to say, you know, we have some difficulties here, and I want to talk with you about what, what this does to me because I, I know it triggers something in me, and I, I want to talk with uh, what is going on inside of you. They can't do that. They can't think that way. It's all about their own uh, self. They want to create a uh, their own alternate reality that they live inside of. They want to bring you into their alternate reality. And by the way, uh, not 99% of the time, but 100% of the time when they are constructing their alternate reality and you don't know which end is up, it's always about them. It's always going to be to their vantage point. So keep that in mind. 
So as you try to figure out how am I going to manage myself knowing that they're trying to bring this splintered mindset uh, toward me and they want to create that inside of me, first and foremost, recognize who you're dealing with. The truth is that you are dealing with somebody who's grossly immature. You know, one of the marks of maturity is uh, for a person to say, hey, look, I have some self-examination. That they can't even go to step one on that. They're just in raw impulse. They're, uh, they're like a whining kid and blaming and kicking and screaming and throwing a temper tantrum, except they're a little bit more sophisticated, maybe, as an adult. Know what you're dealing with and know that when they try to make it about you, it's, there's tons of projection going on there. And then separately, I, I'm hoping that you can uh, recognize, wait a minute, there's a truth about me that I need to come to terms with. Who am I and what are my good skills and what do I know about my worth and my value and my interpretations and my take on life? And you need to learn to trust in who you are separate from that other individual. It just makes no sense in a strategy way to, uh, to think, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cues from the person who brings chaos into my life. No, you don't need to do that. Uh, instead, not only are you going to need to clear your mind from uh, from the, all the confusion and fragmentation that they create on the inside of you, but you're going to need to remove yourself from that person in such a way where they're just not continually uh, creating clutter inside your emotions and inside your thinking process. Now, narcissists need you to feel fractured. They need you to feel splintered. But on your side, it's like, well, I need to feel whole. And part of being whole is pulling back and having a healthy definition of who you are. And it may be that you'll need to pull back and talk with some individuals who are not bringing all of this chaos to you, whether it's a therapist or a close friend or a support group, so that you can uh, get back to your basics and, and make sure that you are, you are not going to uh, be the one that is living out their chaos through your fractured reactions. Uh, I'm hoping that you can determine I, I can't count on that person to join me. Therefore, I'm going to individualize my efforts. I know there's a whole person inside of me waiting to come out. And that's what I'm going to give my highest attention to. Now, I hope that videos such as this can remind you of what you're dealing with. Like I say, I know many of you are struggling and hurting and you feel like there's this confusion on the inside. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, one of the reasons that I put these videos out is I continue, I want you to learn how to find your peace. And if you've not already hit the subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so because we're going to try to uh, approach this topic from so many different angles so that you can have a, a growing and healing, uh, you can have a growing and healing impact toward you. Uh, if you haven't, uh, so hit that subscribe button if you, uh, if you will, and hit the like button as well. Uh, if you, if you have a need for therapy, and I know many of you could use that, uh, we have a sponsor, uh, the people at betterhelp.com. They have, uh, there's a link below that will take you to their website. They have a whole team of licensed professional therapists. It's online therapy. It's very ac accessible and it's affordable. And I've had good feedback from people who have sought that out. Please uh, seek the help that you need if, if that's something that uh, would really be uh, appropriate for you. In addition, I also have my therapeutic courses, and these are uh, each course has many videos with uh, teaching documents and, and uh, questions, and it's meant to be a guided kind of way toward healing. Uh, a lot of work that would go into that. Uh, we have Ready, Set, Connect about having good connection skills free to be about finding yourself despite the controllers. This is me, which is our most popular one about setting boundaries with the control, uh, with the, the narcissist. We also have my podcast. For those of you who are in the podcast world, my books, we have our website with many articles and then other resources. So I, I, I'm so appreciative when you allow me to be on your journey with you. Narcissists are chaotic on the inside. They want to bring their chaos and transfer it into you and make you think like you're the nutty one. Don't buy it. Uh, there's a whole person inside of you that needs to come out. And as you uh, make your efforts to, to find that person and define who you are, I'm hoping it takes you to your place of steadiness and calmness. Because in the end, I'd like for you to be a person who's able to find peace. <laughs>